Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We hope that you're blessed by the experience of God's word speaking to you today. A few announcements for the good of the order. This past week, we fed 203 people. 203 people, that is over 1,800 meals that were given out from Messiah uh, this week. So thank you for your contributions. <clears throat> and speaking of contributions, um, for a number of reasons, the bins are no longer uh, being set out. We are asking that you please bring your donations to the church during the hours that we're operating. That's 10 to noon on Tuesdays and 1 to 3 on Thursdays, or you are welcome to bring them up in if you come to any of the prayer services, and I'll make sure that they get um, down in the fellowship hall. And we're happy to receive your contributions, but um, there will be a change in that and uh, the times of the prayer services and food distribution are in your announcements and you can refer to those when making your plans. And as regards the prayer services, um, two Fridays in a row there have been no attendees. So I am making the executive decision that uh, we won't be offering at this on Friday morning, Sunday evening, Tuesday evening, and Wednesday morning, I will still be there uh, with scripture and prayer and a reflection for those of you who choose to bring your lawn chairs and face masks and join us for some in-person worship under the lovely shade tree by our main entrance. And finally, we love to lift your prayers, your joys and concerns during our corporate worship. So if you have anything, for which you would like prayer offered, we invite you to type that into the Q&A and that will be read during the prayers of intercession. And now we take in a deep breath and breathe in God's spirit and release all of our cares and anxieties to the Lord who loves us and gives us life as we prepare our hearts and our minds or worship. We begin with a call to worship. In times to come, your children will ask you, why did the Lord our God ask us to obey these laws? We will tell our children, once we were slave people and now we are free. Once we were no people and now we are God's people. On that first morning, God called us. God called us from nothing. Out of nothing came being. Out of darkness came light. Out of chaos came order. Out of nothing came life. On that first morning, God called us. This day, God calls us to be the people of faith in the midst of meaninglessness. In the midst of meaninglessness. God calls us to meaning. Out of brokenness. God calls us to wholeness. Out of divisiveness. God calls us to community. Out of tears. God calls us to laughter. Out of self-centeredness. God calls us to love one another. Out of unfaithfulness. God calls us to faith. Out of death. God calls us to life. And we will say to our children, come with us and worship God who has created and is creating in our midst. Come with us and keep covenant. In time to come, we will tell our children. Once we were slaves, but now we are free. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people. Out of death to resurrection. Out of chaos to rebirth. Out of unfaithfulness to faith. Praise God for these wondrous gifts.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Call us in righteousness to be a blessing to the nations. Speak to us lovingly so that we may love the world you made. Speak to us and call us into the work of blessing as you call Abram. Give us courage to follow the path you set before us and perseverance to complete the journey. Amen. Well, good morning, boys and girls and adults who are gathered this morning. I'm wondering if we can think back. I'm wondering if we can think back to maybe the first time you went into school or the first time you went to preschool or the first time that a new person walked up to you at the playground and talked to you. Or maybe even we can think about our first job interview. We walked into that building for the first time and we didn't know. I remember those times and boy, they were scary. It was frightening to go into a new school. I went to a couple new schools, you know, elementary school and then middle school and then we moved and and I went to a, a high school and then we then we moved and I went to a different high school and every time it was it was so scary and I didn't know I didn't know who was in there and who was going to be my friend and where my classes were going to be and who my teachers were it was just scary or a job interview you didn't know if the person was going to be pleasant or grumpy or if you were going to be qualified for the job or if you're wearing the right clothes. Lots of scary things. And in the Bible, there's a story of a man and a woman. And his name is Abram and her name is Sarai. 
and they're married and they have a place to live and things to do and a family there and friends and one day god calls to abram and says i want you to pack up your stuff i want you to take your flocks uh, goats sheep to you take your wife i want you to take your nephew and i want you to go to load everything up and start traveling and I'm going to show you the land that I'm going to give you. Wow. That's even scarier than walking into a school because at least your mom knows where the school is. But God told Abram just to go and he would show him. I find knowing stories like that really helpful because I'm not the only person who's been scared or been asked to do something new or different or a little bit frightening. And what I like about that story isn't just that there are other people like me who are going into something new and that that's in the Bible and I can read about it. But when God calls Abram and Sarai to go, God says, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to show you where to go. I'm going to walk beside you. I'm going to make sure you get to where you're going. And that I find really comforting that wherever we go, whatever new thing we're walking into no matter how scared we might be and i get scared a lot god's right there god's right there kind of with his arm around your shoulder saying it'll be okay i'm with you i'm not gonna leave you alone so if there's something coming up maybe school or you don't know if you're gonna have school or school online and you don't know how you're gonna do that or or moms and dads that aren't sure about getting back to work because they have to take care of you. God's with you. God's with us all. And God's going to show us the way. And on that, we can count. Let's thank God for that. Ah, God, lots of times that things seem scary and we just aren't sure where it is we're supposed to go or or we know and it still scares us because it's a first time. So help us to remember that you walked with Abram and Sarai and that you're walking with us each and every day, each and every step and loving us the whole time. And all God's children said, amen. feet, Lord, while I run this race. Guide my feet, Lord, while I run this race. Guide my feet, Lord, while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Stand by me, Lord, while I run this race. Stand by me, Lord, while I run this race. Stand by me, Lord, while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. I'm your child, Lord. This race. Yes, I'm your child, I'm your child, Lord, while I run this race. Yes, I'm your child, I'm your child, Lord, while I 
run this race For I don't want to run this race in vain For I don't want to run this race in vain Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are need, in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of a new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay and evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially those we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who can travel. We pray, pray for those doctors and nurses and EMTs and aides who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you, Shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints so close to us whom we miss deeply. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church leaders and leaders throughout the land, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the deepest desires of our hearts. We pray for peace for the families of Shirley and Rajni who died from COVID-19 this week. Please pray for Bruce Ingram that the shots he is getting in his back for pain will help. Prayers for Elaine Dielstra as she deals with health issues. Lord, in your mercy, Prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. Praise is fitting for the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make music for God with a ten-stringed harp. Sing for the Lord a new song. Play your instrument skillfully with joyful sounds. For your word, O Lord, is right, and faithful are all your works. You love righteousness and justice. Your steadfast love fills the whole earth. By your word were the heavens made. By the breadth of your mouth, all the hosts of heaven. 
you gather up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin and store up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe. For God spoke and it came to pass. God commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to nothing and thwarts the designs of the peoples. Your will, O Lord, stands fast forever and the designs of your heart from age to age. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. from Genesis, the 12th chapter. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the Oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. How many of you remember that opening scene to the sound of music? Oh, wait, I can't see you. Darn. Well, <clears throat> do you remember the camera panning, the whole of the Swiss Alps, the gorgeous views of the landscapes, the mountains and lakes, the hills and the valleys? And then as the camera zooms in ever so slowly, there's a solitary figure in that mountain. Starts off looking like a teeny tiny little speck, but as the camera keeps coming closer and closer and closer, suddenly Maria is in full view, spinning and singing, and it's gorgeous. And the next scene, of course, is the nuns back at the Abbey, singing about this problem named Maria an incorrigible girl who can't seem to keep track of time, who doesn't ever stop talking, a young novice whom none of them are quite sure is really fit to ever be a nun. Sort of makes you wonder how she got there in the first place. We don't know anything about Maria's backstory. So how is it that someone like Maria can hear God's call, God's desire to set her apart? Well, I can't help but think about the sound of music when I start to read the Abram and Sarai saga in the book of Genesis. What has come 
before this story of Abram's call is a panoramic picture. We're only in the 12th chapter of Genesis and everything that has come before has been on this grand scale. The whole of creation, the mountains and lakes and the peaks and the valleys, and then, and then sin and evil implode on the scene in, in a prolific way. And evil seems to take over the entire earth and God wipes out all of humanity with a flood on a scale that's never been seen since. Everything on the face of the planet dead with the exception of Noah and his family and those animals that he gathered two by two on the ark. Large, grand scale creation and sin. And finally, when the flood subsides, a rebuilding of creation. For all of God's destruction and devastation though, sin was not eradicated. And people then tried to build again on a grand scale, a tower up to the heavens only to be thwarted by God. And now here we are, and the camera is honing in on this one single solitary person, eight generations after Noah, Abram, Abram. And God tells Abram to go, just Take Sarai, Lot, and all your stuff, all of your flocks, and go to a land that I will show you. Now, I've preached before, and I mentioned to the children how terrifying it would have been to follow that call and how brave or crazy Abraham must have been to go with absolutely no plan in mind, but that's not my point today. The point that I want to get to is the reason for the journey. You know, sometimes I think about God's call to Abram and I wonder what Abram did to deserve this. <laughs> it's as if they were to go to this marvelous place, land flowing with milk and honey because they were so special. They were favored. God loved them better. And God wanted to single them out. God wanted to single out their family for eternity. And God wanted to give them the biggest piece of cake the one with the great big rose, ice, icing rose on the top. And I never can figure out why Abraham was chosen. That he was chosen has perplexed us for generations. Because all we know about him is that he was a descendant of Noah. Nothing more, nothing less. But maybe the point of the story isn't how good Abraham was. What Abraham has done or not done? What if really the point of the story is what God has in store for Abraham to do for humanity? The job, the task set ahead of him. God calls Abram to go. And he tells Abram, I'm going to give you a million descendants, sort of the new spin on be fruitful and multiply and you will be a blessing, a blessing. Through you, everyone on earth will be blessed. It doesn't really matter what Abram did. It only matters where Abram is going and what Abram is going to do. Sort of like Maria, back in the Sound of Music. She's a problem. She's late to everything. She's not an asset to the Abbey in the song. She's a flibbity gibbet. And so she's sent off to be a nanny to a gaggle of unruly children, brats, really, when we meet them. And you know how the rest of that story unfolds. Well, so it is with Abram. He sets off, and on the way, he tries to pass off his wife as his sister. He has this uncanny sense of self-preservation over the well-being of anyone important to him. He gets into arguments. He sends a lot packing. And when God doesn't provide an heir fast enough, he conceives a son with Hagar, only to send Hagar and Ishmael off. Abram is a flibbity gibbet of the highest order. And of course, as we stand here, 
with Abram on this threshold, we know none of this. We only know that God is calling Abram to be a blessing to the world. And the possibilities for success or failure are endless. But we also know a second thing. We know that God's plans will not be thwarted. And although the opportunities for failure are endless, we know that God has not only bound Abram to God's self, but God has bound God's self to Abram. God has made a promise, and God is committed to seeing that promise through. And in that, I find so much comfort. So what does it mean for those of us who in faith seek to follow God as Abram followed God? Does it mean that we assume a privileged position that we count ourselves as God's favorite? That we must be deserving of God's favor somehow? Or does it mean that we listen for a higher calling? That we seek to find ways to be a blessing to others first and foremost above ourselves? And if so, how do we do that? Well, if we follow the analogy of the sound of music one last time, I promise, we'll find that the camera in that final scene just keeps panning back and back. It homes in initially on the captain leading the children, Maria with the little one in the back, leading them to safety and freedom. And as the camera pans back farther and farther, again, the people become mere dots on the landscape that once again, shows the whole of the glorious creation. Like Abram, it's not about us and what we have. It's about how we engage with the world. You know, if you remember, Abram also took God to task over Sodom and Gomorrah, being a blessing to the families of the earth means so many opportunities. It means standing in solidarity with those who are oppressed or in danger or fearful. It means engaging the resources of those who have enough for the good of those who do not. Blessing the families of our community for us can mean meals and friendship. And blessing can take oh so many other forms can mean sitting and listening, can mean staying home, wearing a mask, can mean checking in on our neighbors or picking up an extra can of green beans, can mean standing on a street corner with a sign or reading a book about injustice and then discussing it with others. There is no perfect way to be a blessing other than remembering that what we do is a partnership between us and God. And it is God calling us to this work. Like Abram, we're probably going to make mistakes. And so we remember in those moments that ultimately this is God's work. And God is not going to let it fail. As the camera pans back from us, we see the scope of God's creation in need of blessing. And like Abraham, we take a step forward, maybe singing and twirling, maybe walking in the back with the little ones, maybe running in a little bit late, maybe as a flibbity gibbet, but one step forward moving forward together. Amen.
yet will not move. What pain is there in anxious weeping, in helpless anger and distress? If you are in your Savior's keeping, in sorrow will be love you less. For Christ Let us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we listen to the music, I invite you to take this time to reflect on first how God has blessed you and then the many ways and opportunities ahead of you this week that you can be a blessing to others with your time, your talents, and your treasures.
Let us be bold to pray the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. At the end of the postlude, I invite you to join us for coffee hour. Now the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to use the chat window to exchange the peace with one another. peace, knowing that God calls us to be a blessing to the world. Thanks be to God.